Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of August 16th. Brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com, where real people inform you, not corporations. I am Winston Smith. Judge watching, P.E. Nolan has a report, a commentary from Dr. Woody, our asshole of the week, and more. First, our top story. For more than a decade, federal prosecutors in Pennsylvania claimed that former judge Mark Civarella unjust, unjustly sentenced juveniles, some as young as 10 years old, to hard time as part of a scheme to fatten his own bank account. A jury agreed with the prosecution last week, sentencing him to 28 years in prison on corruption charges, not on child trafficking. That's about 38 days each for every child he sold. The media, they will follow a story about somebody trading food stamps for a beer till the amount of coverage alone leaves the impression that all recipients of food stamps are alcoholic lazy trash. But when it comes to judges, virtually no coverage from the mainstream press or a buffering of the true facts when they do cover a story on judges. So, let's look at a few of the judges that were busted, convicted, or caught with their pants down in the past few weeks. Here come the judge! Here come the judge! Mississippi. Justice and law enforcement officer Billy Bonner arrested on rape charges. Billy Bonner, 72, was arrested last Tuesday afternoon after Wayne General Hospital reported a 16-year-old rape victim had been brought to the medical facility. The teenage girl had been cleaning Bonner's house when the alleged attack occurred. Atlanta. Senior Judge Jack Camp was arrested on federal judge charges last week by the FBI. He was nominated to the federal bench by President Reagan. Judge Camp has presided over thousands of drug cases, but no doubt if he pleads guilty to any drug offense a few months in rehab and he will be back on the bench sending pot smokers to corporate prisons like nothing ever happened. How about down in Florida? Rhonda Hollander, 47, a female traffic judge, had been accused of following a man into a courthouse bathroom and photographing him with her cell phone while he was taking a pee-pee. Willie Jackson Jr. was preparing to use the urinal in the courthouse bathroom when Hollander allegedly photographed him. Police say that she then snapped a keepsake photo of another man as he entered the bathroom. Hollander was charged with attempted oral truncation of castigating appendage and unlawful digital imaging of a urinary event, or something like that. Hollander is currently free on $700 bail. Down in New Mexico, Judge Albert Pat Murdoch was arrested last Tuesday afternoon on charges including rape. Undercover police had received a tip of a sex tape that was made with a judge and a prostitute. They saw on the tape when they watched it that Judge Murdoch was having sex with that prostitute. At one point on the tape, Murdoch forced himself on the woman to perform oral sex on her after she told him no. He is charged with criminal sexual penetration and intimidation of a witness. Staying in New Mexico, no offense Woody, Judge Mike Murphy, already indicted on bribery charges and suspended from the bench, was arrested again last week on a new bribery charge. Prosecutors have an audio recording of the bribery taking place. Okay, one more. This is good. Say the best for last. Judge convicted of battering wife fails to convince court she beat herself up. A high court judge was found guilty of battering his wife in a fit of temper over a missed dinner. With a verdict, James Allen was branded a liar and a wife beater. Mrs. Allen had described how she punched herself in the head after becoming totally frustrated at her husband wanting to leave the house over a ridiculous argument. An eight-year-old child who was in the house at the time had made a call and told the operator Mr. Allen was trying to kill Mrs. Allen. Allen told the court he was in an irritable mood. He said, when I entered the kitchen, I actually said to my wife, I was not happy. She should have took the warning. I said I had been upstairs for an hour and a half and I had had nothing to eat all day. Bitch. A fight followed, which became somewhat heated. Mr. Allen said he wanted to leave in the car so he could get away and cool down. He claimed he was trying to get his car keys when his wife punched herself in the face three times, then stabbed herself in the back twice and finally strangled herself unconscious. Jurors said they had a hard time believing he couldn't get the keys from her while she was being so busy. And this, a new weekly feature here, Crumbs from Dr. Woody. Dr. Woody is a bona fide scholar. His educated and well-versed writing skills grace the worldwide hippie site regularly. 
Quoting Dr. Woody, my column, As the Cookie Crumbles, is intended to hearken to both the soap opera aspects of our current conditions, as well as to evoke the sentiment in that old saying, that's just how the cookie crumbles. I couldn't have said it better. Okay, Winston, and hey, hey, hippies. The biggest, most influential voting block in the country is that block of frightened, threatened, insecure white people, mostly males. The so-called FTIWP hyphen MM. You can spot them easily. Their fury at the diminishment of their privilege and their resentment at the inferiors who would replace them and their stark crawling fear that they'll someday be subjected to the same treatment they meted out when they had power. Candidates who play to and prey upon those factors will dominate the political arena for at least as long as the FTIWP dash double M retain the demographic numerical and as I think it probably goes without saying economic advantages. I give them about 50 years. Against this backdrop, we have the president slightly disingenuously declaring that there is something wrong with our politics. Well, what do you uh, think? Might it be that the president elected in a near veneration as a Democrat, steadfastly refuses to govern as even a nominal Democrat might or could be expected to govern, refuses to announce or propose Democratic programs, refuses to defend core Democratic principles, or any principles really other than the tired litanies of corporate obeisance, globalism, and the free trade so-called. For there to be a functioning two-party system, no matter how flaccid and weak, still it requires there to be, wait for it, babies, two parties, the president's party and the party of the loyal opposition. So when did the president cease to be the chief spokesperson, the veritable voice of their party? The chimperer Bush was unabashed leader of the GO pukes, the governor, the cheerleader for the party line. Without Obama's voice, the Dems have no voice. Where there is only one functioning party and an ostensible leader who remains neutral and above the fray, there is a craven dereliction and rejection of founding principles they swear to uphold. And it is of that that I think President Obama stands indicted by his every compromising and compromised breath. And on that happy note, hasta luego, hippies. Back to you, Winston. Thanks, Doc. And management wanted to add Andy Rooney. Ha, tell me who to put on my show. And now a report from P.E. Nolan. What do you have to share with us this week, Trish? Hi, thanks, Winston. Today I am asking everyone in Hippie Land to get active with the share button. The open group on Facebook is provocative and fun, but in order for the Worldwide Hippies community to grow on the World Wide Web, we need to move beyond Facebook. It's easy when you use those little buttons at the bottom of a story at the Worldwide Hippies site. Facebook is great, but anything that happens on Facebook stays on Facebook. Using additional sources will extend our reach into the broader community by increasing our visibility. Bookmark the site so you can come to Worldwide Hippies whenever you want to because, you know, sometimes Facebook can be fucked up. Uh, you'll notice the Facebook button is there on the site with the others, um, Twitter and stumbled upon good places for sharing. If you use Twitter, um, include via over 50 hippie um, or worldwide hippie, that's Winston and me, and we can have a twibe. But the most important expansion can come from community, uh, online communities like Care2 Network and Current TV. Join a group and post Worldwide Hippies stuff there. Um, check out your local newspaper because sometimes they have online community bulletin boards. Worldwide Hippies has no money for advertising and relies on you to keep up the howl for Peace and justice. Back to you, Winston. Thanks, Trish. And you're right. Activism starts with a click. Oh, it's time for our asshole of the week. And this week it goes to Mitt Romney for his defending corporations as people. Watch this. 
One is we could raise taxes on people. That's corporations! What the way it's corporations! Big time corporations are people, corporation. my friend. No, we can raise not. taxes on Of course they are. I think we also should consider a higher retirement age. Here's the paradox in this whole concept of corporate personhood. When it comes to rights, Republicans say corporations are people. But when it comes to responsibilities of personhood, like paying taxes, being sued for negligence or criminal manslaughter, that sort of thing, their response is, are you crazy? We're talking about corporations here, not people. Corporations are the kind of people who get to say whatever they want to, to whomever they want, unless they don't want to say anything. So, for all of that, and because you have such good hair, you, Mitt, the Pivot Man Romney, are Worldwide Hippies Asshole of the Week. Well, that's it for this week. My thanks to P.E. Nolan and the doctor. Please visit WorldWideHippies.com for original articles and commentary from some of the best writers on the net. And, of course, the news always updated every two hours. And make a donation to help us keep up the howl for peace and justice. And we will see you here next Monday. Oh,